Okay, I got a factory injector here. Um, it's a real small guy. Had to special order that. I got four spark plugs, that's not enough. The parts store didn't send me the other two, so those are on their way over. And I have some intake manifold gaskets. So I'm gonna yank this intake off and we will see if we see anything else that's causing the oil intrusion into that one injector connector. To remove the intake, remove all these eight millimeter headed bolts. There are also two nuts on the front of the intake and two near the throttle body, as well as a 13 millimeter bolt holding the bracket to the throttle body. And while I'm over here, I'm also gonna unhook the connectors from the throttle body and the map sensor and then unclip that harness from the intake itself. Now I'm unplugging all of the injectors. To remove the fuel rail, there are four Torx bolts. Now I only needed to pull two of them out because I was only pulling out half the fuel rail, but I didn't realize the uh, connecting line would be so flexible, so I pulled all four of them out. So after fuel rail is up, I used some needle nose pliers, pulled out the injector, put the new one in, put some assembly grease on the O-rings when you install these, and I also put some on the fuel rail. Put all the bolts back in. And I put new intake gaskets on here as well to prevent vacuum leaks. Before I put the intake on, let's go ahead and check resistance. Let's see. That should be it. Now the engine's cold. And this injector has never been fired, so well, we got 12 ohms there. That's within range. Just compare it to another one here. About 12 ohms. So I'm not going to check all the other ones. We checked them the other day, and they were all about the same. So I'm just going to plug them all in. I cleaned out these connectors. Put a little uh, dielectric grease on the outer portion of the injector to uh, make sure that seal seals good and slides right in. Um, new gaskets. Slap it back together and see if it's fixed. This time instead of using the snap-on scope, I'm going to hook up the Pico scope. I just picked up this guy from the pawn shop. A uh, buddy called me up and said, someone's trying to trade this in, sent me a picture of it. I said, what's it worth? I told him I'd give him a couple hundred bucks. He gave the guy a hundred bucks for it, and we picked it up for a few more. So, this thing is basically unused. There's only one lead that's, uh, or two leads that are out of the uh, plastic bags. But I didn't chest it before, uh, before purchasing it, so hopefully everything's all good. Um, even if this is bad, I have another Pico scope. Um, just the, uh, the rest of the stuff alone is worth what we paid. One thing I don't see in the kit is an attenuator. You need these anytime you're hooking up to uh, a solenoid, injectors, um, ignition coils. So luckily I have those from my other kit. Okay, I just need to change my time base a little bit. I don't need quite that much information. Um, let's set up a sync channel here. So this over there. Got a ruler across so we can uh, see if they're all about the same. And they appear to be very close. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. But first I'm going to hit spacebar here, stop my recording. Now if we want to see a little more clear we can zoom in on each one. That is strange. Commands it on here, but then there's no current until there. 
So off camera, I did some troubleshooting to make sure that the new scope wasn't defective. I tried a different amp clamp, had similar results. And then I realized I had an interference issue with the low amp clamp as it was located very close to the PCM when I was hooked to the injector sub harness connector down by the PCM. So I moved my amp clamp over to the single injector and just verified the uh, injector waveform. Now that we have everything hooked up properly, let's examine the waveform we get and see if it looks good. On the left side is where the PCM turns on the injector. Right in the middle, there's a little dip. We call that the pintle hump. And that's where the fuel injector opens up and starts spraying fuel. On the right side is where the computer turns off the injector. Now all of this looks fairly normal and a lot better than the image I had before with my amp clamp near the PCM. So I also had to do an oil change on this. So I did that while I was on the rack. Um, we did the spark plugs that replace that injector. Scope pattern looked good after I uh, moved my amp clamp. <laughs> Cleared codes, let the vehicle warm up, run nice and smooth. That's when it would act up before, went and drove it. Everything's fine. Uh, readiness monitors passed. So I'm going to call this one fixed. And that fluid that was in the connector, I'm going to say that was uh, fuel soaking through that injector, contaminating that connector. And then I don't know if number three injector is leaking as well. They didn't want to do both of them. So if that one fails in the future, we'll know why and we'll know that that fluid came from there. Um, it's possible that it got pushed out of number five injector through the harness. If there's a splice pack for those two cylinders, um, it could have wicked through that injector harness and soaked into that other connector. But for now, everything's running good. So I'm going to call this one done. See you next time.